So Spencer, thank you for taking the time on a day off on the road. Are you dialing in from, is it Kansas or Missouri? Yeah, I'm in uh, Lawrence, Kansas right now on a day off. Lawrence, Kansas, are the Get Up Kids around or? I know, right? <laughs> it, it, we love this area. We actually, um, I think it was like 2005 was the first time we played here. And then we started scheduling days off here if we were going to be crossing, you know, like if it was in our, in our path. And we probably had like 10 days off here in the, in our career that, cause we, uh, we just fell in love with this little area a long time ago. So glad to hear that you like where you're <clears throat> at. You're not stuck. Well, in, <laughs> in... I tell you what, so <laughs> I got on the bus this morning, came in to use the gym in the hotel sure. and it was, um, 60 something degrees outside. It's like, great. This is awesome. By the time I showered after the gym and went back to the bus, it was like 40 and raining like sideways and now it's going to snow um in the next couple of hours and uh, it's just temperatures just dropping so not the best for the day but hey at least we have a day of rest you know exactly well hey again you are on tour and you're still supporting voyeurist on the road are you playing a lot from this new record on the tour um, yeah, we're playing a couple songs from Voyeurist and we just dropped a new single um, a week and a half ago. So it's kind of a taste of what's coming after Voyeurist, um, which is soon for us. We normally wouldn't, uh, I guess, release music that fast, but we were just, you know, we did a tour last year and normally we would have, we would have done two tours. But everything just post COVID has just been a little different. So. Right. We, we're just kind of taking in things that as as we want to do them. So now we're going to be dropping a few songs throughout the year um, and uh, potentially a new record this year, early next year. I'm not sure when we'll, when we'll drop the whole thing, but we'll be releasing music throughout the year. Right. Voyeurist, I believe you put out five singles from the album before it came out. And these days, right. the definition of a single is a little different. But at this point in Under Oath's career, it's the kind of thing where if you play 15 songs in a night, there's a chance that 15 songs literally charted, had music videos. In other words, it must be hard at this point to put together a set list. Yeah, it is. Um, we only get about like five songs of wiggle room per tour, I feel like. Because I feel like there's, like you said, there's, probably two songs off each record that we have to play right you know um we have to play two songs off chasing safety without a doubt two songs off of define the great line mm -hmm. uh at least one song off lost one song off disam uh at least a song off erase me and then two songs off voyeurist you know, that's if you that's really trimming the fat, you know, like that's like the things that we have to do. And then the new song, you know, you're at 10 songs of stuff. If we cut every corner before we could start, you know, changing the set list up and making it, you know, different. So, right. Um, yeah, but I think that's cool. I mean, you don't want to cut songs that people want to see that grew up on your band or never yeah. saw you play or whatever. So there's certain songs that we have to play. Yeah. Earlier into your career, it must have been like, well, how do we fill 60 minutes? Okay, we'll have a five minute intro song. Every yeah. other song oh, about yeah. how y'all doing tonight? Things are great. It's great to be here. And now you almost don't have time for any of that because yeah. you get those Dude. 70 to 90 <laughs> minutes in. Dude, I, I've been thinking about that a lot lately because um we you know like the set list, me and a couple of the other guys are like really hands on with the set list. And at the same time that I like feel like, man, we don't really have much wiggle room here. I like, I'm releasing my first solo record this year. Oh. And I've only, I've only put out two songs. And even if I put out the whole thing, like I'm already like, you know, talking to agents and stuff and like trying to get together. Like when, when will the first, when will the debut show be? What will the debut tour be? Like when will the full record drop? And I'm sitting here thinking, I'm like, how the hell am I going to fill a set list where there's only, you know, so many songs. Like that's if I played every song on my solo record, like it'll still probably be like, I'm going to have to like jam, jam it out in the middle and that kind of stuff. I, I think, and it like reminded me of the days when under oath used to do 
like a new song live that wasn't wasn't recorded. Like we used to do that all the time, where we would do like an interlude and jam on it before a song with vocals and everything. And that honestly inspired a lot of new songs. Um, there's some there's some YouTube clips I'm sure you can find out there where where like interlude and that interlude actually turned into a song. You know, that's happened with a lot of bands. It's a random example to give you, but Def Leppard that happened with so you're not alone oh, wow. with all that yeah so speaking of Def Leppard I don't know why they come to mind what was the band that first got you into heavy music oh that's that's tough because it depends on what you consider heavy because my parents were like Zeppelin you know that was like born in the Zeppelin household right. you know uh, but they also listened to the, you know, the Beatles and Pink Floyd and uh, the Rolling Stones and the Beach Boys. You know, they, that that was their era. You know, like so. For me and my older brother, we discovered like the grunge era, which were like Soundgarden and Nirvana, Stone Temple Pilots, Alice in Chains. Like that was our bread and butter. I missed the eighties uh, hair metal stuff. Oh, so you didn't like start that, off on Van Halen and Motley Crue? No, that wow. was like, I I went from the Zeppelin, like my parents' music to grunge. And then from grunge, my one of my, you know, I got two step, two older stepbrothers and one older brother. Um, and my older brother got into like the punk rock era, like Dead Kennedys and Subhumans and Queers and the Misfits and all that. And at the same time, we discovered the Deftones. So that was like the big jump for me from grunge to, I guess, the Deftones Lincoln Park era. But yeah, the, the hair metal thing, I just, that wasn't anything I lived through, I guess. I always thought Faith No More was everyone's jump from the grunge to the metal. Faith No More was happening at the same time as the grunge stuff though i'm pretty sure wasn't it yeah they i remember it, but yeah i i remember the epic music video do, 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 do. that song and then um i remember my brother getting one of the rec the king for a day fool for a lifetime and that was really like smooth and like chill i feel like <laughs> I don't think that that was very metal. That, I, but I liked that record a lot. I just, we, I guess we were just a little younger, I guess, or I was. So um, the Faith No More stuff, I, I probably went back and listened to later in life. But I, I respect them. They're definitely got some cool shit going on. Uh, cool. But yeah, the, the metal, I guess I never really dove full into like, screaming metal until i started going to local shows and i grew up in a in in north carolina and there was a local band called code seven. Oh yeah do you remember code seven yes what the number it's, seven in in the name and um yeah they were they they at first they were like kind of new metal and then they went into the full-on like metal core like epic guitar delay stuff and one of the guys was a promoter and he owned like lots of little venues like you know like they'd always move there's all these diy like vfw type right. shows and since they were a touring signed band they were bringing bands in all the time and we were just big code seven fans because we were you know they were the older generation than us so we looked up to them a lot being like i've been in bands my whole life like my first band, I was like in elementary school with my cut older cousin and my older brother. And then really? from there I had my own, yeah, then I had my own band and it was like a Nirvana ripoff. And then we got into like more Deftones ripoff bands as we got older and then punk rock bands, all sorts of stuff, you know, like my whole life. And um, watching Code 7, that was like our, you know, we were like, oh man, that band like made it because they were signed and then, uh, you know they had they could sell out venues and stuff and that they were bringing all the bands in and they 
that's what kind of introduced us to like the screaming stuff. And then there was another band from North Carolina called Hope's Fall. Oh yeah, yeah. And and they were kind of this, in the same vein. And that was they were touring as well, and they were signed and and bringing cool bands into town. And um, that's where we found like Poison the Well and stuff like that, and Glass Jaw and. Um, you know, seeing those shows when you're in high school, the early Dillinger skate plan, like under the running board era, calculating infinity and all that stuff, like coming to town and being like, what am I watching? You know, like as a kid, that was, um, and there was another band called Catharsis that was super yeah, like, heavy. I remember all these bands. Yeah, Most Catharsis. Hold up, we're glad to say. Yeah, Catharsis was another local, another local one. And I remember going to one of their shows with my older brother and I don't really know where this is on the timeline of the story I'm telling you but uh, before the poison the well and all that started coming to town but like I remember going to a show with my older brother and catharsis was the headliner and I was walking in and I was so little the singer of catharsis came up to me and said hey what are you doing here and I was like oh with my brother I'll never forget this and he was like oh cool like why don't you come up with me and he put me on the side of the stage because I was so small. And he sat me up on the side. I sat like where the monitor engineer was because he was, I guess he was concerned because I, I would have got my ass kicked, not yeah. knowing what I was going to. Um, and I just left my older brother and went up on the stage and like he put me on the side there. And I and the, the venue fills up, you know, it was like during changeover, I guess. Uh, when I was walking in through the parking lot, he came up and grabbed me and took me up on the side. And then they started and the singer started hitting himself in the head with a microphone and bleeding. And I was like probably 11 or 12 or something. I was just going like, oh my God, this is so cool. You know, and it was like the nicest dude ever. And then all of a sudden he turned into someone completely different on stage. And I thought that was so fascinating. Um, so my, my intro into a lot of this stuff was mostly local because I was going, I was lucky enough to have a cool older brother and cool older stepbrothers and like, kids my age weren't going to shows or listening to the kind of music that I was, but I was around all these older kids all the time. So I got to witness a lot of the cool stuff and hear it. When my friends didn't even have a taste in music yet, I was already like obsessing over bands and buying the circus magazine and, yeah. you know, going to the local record store and looking at the back of the record of like, okay, I like this band. What record label are they on? Flipping it over, seeing that, and then like going and finding other bands on the same record label like that's how I was finding out about music and going to the show of like, okay, I know, I think Poison the Well is cool because Code 7 showed me that they were cool. Hmm. So now I'm going to go see Poison the Well and see what other bands are playing, get there early and then buy all the records of all the other bands, you know, as a little kid. And then it's funny, you know, fast forward a couple of years, you know, these bands are on tour with me, you know, yeah. it's pretty wild, surreal. Like when I'll never forget when we took Poison the Well on tour and, they were playing before us. I was like, this doesn't make sense. Like my brain couldn't handle it. I was like, what am I, how are they playing before us? Like, why? Like I was standing in the crowd like two or three years ago, finger pointing the lyrics. And now they're direct support to me. You know, like we're just idiot kids. So, they, <laughs> uh, you know. Well, I'm glad to recap what I've heard from you that Under Oath has new music coming soon. You have a solo record coming. We're going to see some touring from you as a solo artist. So 2024 is sounding to be pretty busy in addition to 2023. So yeah, congrats and really thank you for the many years of great music. Yeah, man, I'm, I've got no plans on slowing down. Like I, uh, like I said, it's like my first solo record. It's, it's not metal at all. So if this is a metal thing, yeah, no one will like it. <laughs> it's like the, I'm just using a whole different side of my brain. It's more like indie rock experimental psychedelic yep. pop you know just something different for me to do that's not the under oath stuff i work on lots of different bands music i write for a lot of people i collaborate with lots of people i've been asked to do every genre you can imagine but country and hip-hop really you know so I've, I've worked on lots of stuff and i've been in bands my whole life and experimented with all sorts of different sounds and music I, i'm a music lover i'm a music fan you know and i, I love a good song is a good song. Yeah. A good band is a good band. It doesn't matter in the genre to me. Um, so I like to experiment. And and this is my first solo venture. Um, and uh, it's called Slow Tide without the W, S-L-O-T-I-D-E, band at 
at slow tide band online if you want to look for it for on your socials or whatever but um it's it's really different from under oath and under oath just put out a new song called let go uh, you can find that anywhere and we're going to be touring a lot this year and uh releasing more songs uh both with my solo and with my uh full-time rock band under oath <laughs> so yeah um busy guy as david lee roth would say nothing but yeah that's what i'm hearing yeah yeah man I, i'm uh I, I love this you know i wouldn't do it if i didn't love it and uh yeah nothing can uh stop me from doing what i what, what i love and, you know um uh, and I, i'm fortunate enough that i get to do this for a living you know so it's, it's great i can support my family and you know play music and write songs well Get warm, enjoy the rest of your day off, and thank you for taking thank the you. time to speak with me, Spencer. Looking forward to your next New York show. Oh, thank you, man. Peace. Outrocast.